What about new events versus current events? How do you view getting into newish events and looking for them versus events that maybe you've always gone to? How do you judge them? How do you view them? How do you make those decisions? Yeah. So again, the the strategy that we have, so we, we have the, what are the new events that we should be looking at? And then we have what I call our, our cross business unit. So what events are we currently already at, but there might be another team that's owning that. How can we tap into that already event to drive down some of those costs they take the lead on the event we can just help with supplemental content but to your question for us it was what are those it events or those events that they hit our target audience we're looking for the most amount of people and then really trying to have influence in in apac north america latin america and emea and then from there or over the last year, now two years, has been, let's go after these events where we haven't traditionally been, see if they work, if they splash, and if they don't, we we don't do it again next year. Yeah. We had an event in London, Singapore, where we felt it was the right event, but again, because we didn't have that alignment within the, the geo, it was still successful, but it wasn't the right one that necessarily fit for that team. And so there's some lessons learned. There's some, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to try to find the event that is most impactful for our value in business. It might not always work and that's okay. We course correct very quickly, but we did have a success this year in Amsterdam where again, taking that working with the team, we found an event in Amsterdam that we thought was right. We worked with the local team. It was a new event. So we didn't have the traditional, here are the leads from last year. Let's target that for, for driving meetings. It was really much boots on the ground, working with the local team to sell up and to make sure that this is, is successful. We had a VIP lunch and it was a resounding success because mm, we good. bought in to the local team. They saw the value in this and they were really being an advocate for us. And so that's where, as we identify the new events with our you know value prop in business, some of them are going to be successful. Let's continue that and do better next year. Some of them, of them aren't. We learn it's that stop, start, go. So we stop doing that immediately and just kind of see and, and refine the process as we go. So a lot of companies get attracted and drawn into just the big events and they don't understand that sometimes they may just not be great audiences. It is about the audience. Well, and it's also the sales is the, the minute they talk to sales, the sales team or person for that show organizer will tell them what they want to hear. And it's, as an event marketer, yeah. our due diligence to really look at those numbers, is that really going to drive value? I, I looked at an event in Chicago where they sold me on, I'm going to reach these all these people. I went to do a site visit of that event. It was in a hotel lobby, which that's not to say that that's bad, but it was just in a hotel. The booths were right in the lobby. And then they had one room that was where all the presentations happened for me. Seeing that, you know, it was $2,000 visit to go to Chicago for one night to visit versus spending $100,000 on the activation. Yeah, of course, yeah. So it's it's a little bit of our don't get bought into what a show organizer tells you, you know, yeah. to have that conversation, look at the perspectives, and then from there, do the due diligence and see, are my competitors there? If not, you know, is this an opportunity for me to kind of break into that market? You know, years and years ago, we were working with a company that wanted to go to their first trade show, a pretty big brand name at this point, and they were fixated on this trade show, but they had never gone on and uh, they wanted to do this real custom big experience and all this stuff. And I, I just, for some reason, kept trying to, are you sure? Are you sure? Do you, you know, they wanted to buy the booth and I said, I'd love to, I'd love to sell you this booth. I still think it's the best bet. I think you should rent I think we should go test the show. I think we should do something small, creative, go in there, spot all these things. And they were like, no, 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 no. And they ended up not using us and it sucked. But I just, I firmly believed it because they didn't have the answers about the show. It was like, they just were assuming. And months and months later, my contact reached out to us and was like, hey man, like you were right. And I kind of told him on the phone, I said, I really didn't want to hear that. Like, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I don't right. feel good about it. But essentially, the cool part of the story was they ended up, we had, you know, had some conversations and then it turned into, you know, we think the audience might be here at this small, they end up being these small little niche 
different style shows. And we ended up building these really cool, sleek little 10 by 20s, doing some stuff for them. And they crush these shows at a fraction of the cost. Yeah. A fraction of the cost. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, that's kind of where as an event person, manager, specialist, coordinator, it's important that we don't get so fixated on just execution and the task. You know, we really need to do our due diligence on being, you know, focused on what is that event that's going to draw the value, looking at the sponsorship, really have a, a, a look at the fine print and, you know, sometimes saying no. I mean, I've gotten so many conversations and even today I got a, a ping from a team member that was, we have to be at this event. And it's like, I go, okay, but why, you know, are we, what's the objective? What are we trying to do? Well, AI, AI, everyone's focused on AI. It's like, we ha I hear you, but I want to make sure that it's the right event before we just jump. Because, and that was the case with the event that I attended in Chicago. I mean, our team said, we have to be at this. It's a really good one. It's been vetted by this company. Okay, well, just because a company said that they, we should be there, we need to do our due diligence then and, and evaluate. So that's where I would say to those listening, if you have an event that you want to go big on, I would, and you've not been there, first year is just go and attend, evaluate it, see what the competition is doing from speaking, from sessions, from the booth, and then maybe you know talk about developing a, a sponsorship for the following year. I mean, that way you're spending a little bit of money to evaluate it versus going all in and you know you might be setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, I mean, I love the idea of feeling your way into events. Like you're saying, even do a site visit. Just you, right? That's always a good way if, if you can. If you can't and you don't have time to waste, I mean, just feeling your way into something, starting small and building upon it because obviously that budgetary spend needs to be watched, you know, yep. from event to event. What about like uh, tactics at these events, right? Like little strategies for engaging people, you know, what kind of thoughts do you have on that? I mean, what have you guys done where you think you do it well, whether it's engagement, you know, the experiential side of things? Yeah, so I would say, you know, again, we're services and solutions. So what is what is tangible that there's it's really how do you sell a solution? And so my charter has really been what are those experiential demos that we can create? And there's two that really we've been doing that have been successful. So one of our offerings is consumption-based model. So you pay for what you need. How do you show consumption? And so when it works for us, what we do is is beer. So we'll have a tap in the booth where it gets people questioning, why is there beer that's being poured? We get them to the booth, we scan their badge, we have conversation, and we tell them, well, this offering that we have is consumption-based, so you pay for what you need, much like the alcohol, much like the beer that we have. We give them that, you know, they're walking around, where'd you get that? We have Flanova branded cups. I'm not saying, you know, do beer, but even if it's coffee, even if it's kombucha, like there's things that you can do to show that. And then what we did recently um, for Gartner was, so we sponsored the CI reception. We had Shaquille O'Neal as our big wow, but the charter that I gave to the team was, what's the connection to, to Lenovo? And we had the US Grand Prix in Austin that was the following week, and one of our biggest internal events. And so we took a slot car race and really developed to show Lenovo's end-to-end -end portfolio. So again, we're not working just in our our silo, but we're working across the business units to show from hardware to solution, here's what we can provide. And we did it with a slot car race where, you know, the incentive was, can you beat Shaquille O'Neal's score? And so mm -hmm. that gets them to the table. It's lead generation for us. We have an AI, AR um, component to that where they can take the tablet and scan that over the race course. And then from there, see both physically and then through the tablet, what all Lenovo is doing from sustainability to infrastructure, edge server. So it creates this aha moment. And mm -hmm. we use that at our internal events the following week in Austin, again, tying to um, F1 and just made that experience. And again, we're, we're event professionals, but we're also storytellers at the heart of what we do. I think those are two really you know good examples because they tie back to what you do. And that's that's conversation I think that we're constantly having, which is ideas, tying back, stories, themes, narratives. How can you turn your value proposition or the problem you solve into a story, into a narrative, into a theme, 
right? Because people understand stories. They do. They re they remember stories and they understand them. So yep. I think it's a huge piece of engagement and you guys have definitely nailed it recently with some of those events and what you've done. It's, it's good work.